Hi, this is Shomi Chattopadhyay from Indian Institute of Information Technology, Guwahati. Today, I am going to present my research work of TQ and offline deep learning framework for QS prediction. As we know, with the increasing trend of online activities, the number of functionally equivalent services are increasing rapidly. And therefore, choosing a particular option is getting very difficult and service recommendation is becoming a challenge. Now, if we need to do service recommendation, it has to be based on certain parameters. For example, quality of service parameter, uh, response time, throughput, reliability, all these are some uh, quality of service parameter. And also, it could be based on cost parameter. That means the invocation cost or service cost, or it could be based on popularity like rating or feedback. So the objective of our proposal is to design an algorithm for QS prediction that can be adopted for service recommendation. Now, why do I need to design this QS prediction algorithm? That is because while providing this service, the service provider also promised certain QS values. But in runtime, what we can see, there is a certain fluctuation on this QS values because of a certain criteria. For example, if we consider response time, that could be the variation could be because of this network load or unreliable communication. And that is why QS prediction is very important in the context of service recommendation. This QS value can be uh, can vary actually across different users, different time, different location. But in this work, we focus the QS prediction problem across different users. So this is the QS prediction problem which we are considering and that can be applicable in service composition selection and recommendation problem. Now, while designing this QS prediction pro uh, algorithm, the first thing which we need to ensure the prediction algorithm achieve high accuracy. However, that is not the only criteria which needs to be satisfied. Additionally, the algorithm has to be very scalable that can handle high, large volume of data. And also, if we want our algorithm to be integrated with a real-time system, the algorithm should have faster responsiveness. However, to achieve those goals, we need to address few challenges. Uh, for example, to achieve high accuracy, uh, we need to address uh, these five challenges. One is the presence of outlier. So if the data set contains outliers, then we need, we need to detect these outliers. And if possible, we should have a mechanism to predict the outlier. Second problem is the data sparsity. So as this user service QS matrix is concerned, all the users never invoked all the services. And that is why we can see a lot of entries which are invalid. And due to the sparsity actually, even if we use this memory-based collaborative filtering using similarity, or we can use this some deep learning mechanism where we need to come up with certain feature vector that is uh, getting this feature vector will be very difficult in presence of sparsity. And that also impacts on the accuracy. Also, while designing this QS prediction algorithm to achieve high accuracy, we need to capture the complex relationship among QS data. Also, there is an impact on the uncorrelated user service on the accuracy. So we need to handle this uncorrelated users and services. Finally, cold start could be a problem if there exists a set of new users on set of new services, where actually we do not have the information of these users and services, and that can cause the degradation on accuracy. Similarly, if we want our model to be, uh, to have high responsiveness, that means we need to reduce the number of online computation. Also, we need to design an offline algorithm because we cannot afford to train our model uh, online. That will increase the prediction time. If we need to ensure high scalability, we need to ensure that our algorithm can handle high dimensional data. So these are the certain challenges which we actually try to address in our method to come up with this prediction algorithm that can achieve all these three goals. Now we have uh, studied few uh, methods based on this memory-based uh, collaborative filtering or model-based collaborative filtering. In model-based collaborative filtering, we have investigated, investigated the methods based on matrix factorization or factorization machine or deep learning architecture or classification uh, clustering-based method. But what we observe that these methods actually at a time address few of these challenges, but not everything. So in our model, we try to address all the challenges while achieving the three goals, which we discussed earlier. 
Now, this is the formal definition of this problem. We have aim services in users, and we also have a QS matrix uh, which contains if a user invoked one service in the past, then the QS value is recorded in the matrix, which is typically a real number greater than zero. And if the user never invoked a service, the corresponding entry is represented by zero, indicating the invalid entry. Now, uh, a query uh, which can be represented in terms of target user and target service pair uh, comes uh, to the system and the objective of classical prediction method to predict the value of the QoS for a target service and a target user with high accuracy. However, in our paper, we our objective uh, our objective was to design one QS prediction alg algorithm that not only achieve high accuracy, but also achieve high scalability and foster responsiveness. So uh, we, we actually, uh, this is the framework which we are going to discuss. And the first component of our framework is the outlier detection module. So we first uh, propose one method that can detect the outlier over a vector. So given a vector, we first compute the mean of the vector and the percentage of the data which are lesser than mean and the greater than mean. If we see the significant difference between these percentages, then we can actually conclude that there exist some outliers. And that is why this mean gets shifted. And if uh, this outlier, which we can detect actually, that is beyond the range of this mu plus minus some threshold into standard deviation, then we can actually identify this is outlier and we keep on identifying this outlier, keep on removing this outlier in, a, in an iterative manner. And this algorithm terminates once we satisfy this criteria, that means left percentage and right percentage, the difference between them is within certain threshold and also the outlier which we can detect that is within this range of this mu plus minus threshold into standard deviation. Now we exploit this outlier detection mechanism in our case. What we did actually, we identify this, uh, we, we have this service invocation profile consisting of the QS value of the services. We use this vector, we use this uh, outlier detection mechanism to identify the set of outliers. Similarly, we use this Q, uh, QS invocation profile of a user to identify the outliers. And finally, one entry is identified as the outlier if that is identified as the outlier with respect to user QS invocation profile and also service QS invocation profile. Once we identify one outlier, we just remove the outlier and use the remaining matrix for further processing. We further use this sparsity handling method, which can fill up all the invalid entries of our framework. So what we have done for this invalid entries, we compute this weighted column average and weighted row average and aggregate them using a neural network. Now, while computing this weight, we use the similarity between the target user and all the users and similarity between the target service and all the services as weight. And we train our neural network with the existing set of entries in the training vector. And finally, using this neural network, we filled up all the missing values. Uh, so these are the pre-processing steps of OFDQ. Now, once we have this, all the entries, this filled up matrix, then what we have done for this entry, which we need, which, which needs to be predicted for this entry, we use the entire row vector and column vector as the feature vector, concatenation of them as the feature vector. Now, the problem is if we use the raw data of raw column data or row data, then it is not going to give us uh, good accuracy. That is because Two users can have different distributions, two uh, services can have different distributions, and that is why we need some kind of transformation. So what we have done, we instead of using this raw, um, row vector, we use this transform row vector. This transformation is basically for each entity, we try to predict this value with the set of some statistical parameter and this value. So we use this mean, median, minimum value, maximum value, standard deviation, and the correlation between these two to predict this, to predict this value from this value. 
similarly we have this transformation function in case of column vector also and what we did actually we used two neural networks nf and ng to approximate this transformation function f and g once we have this then what we observe that this transformed uh, this this resulting vector actually uh, has the lot of noises that is because maybe we try to predict this value from the uncorrelated uh, from this value which is uncorrelated and uh, it is kind of impossible to predict this value from this uncorrelated value and that is why we can have this noise in order to remove noise we use this denoising no auto encoder where actually this encoder uh, outputs this latent representation which can be further used uh, as a feature vector for our final module so we have this transformed vector and also the correlation between this uh, target service and all other services we use them as the feature vector for this auto encoder and we have this target value which is the which is the same value which we want to come up with and finally we we use this denoising auto encoder to remove the noise similarly we have done the same thing for in case of this column vector so we have two auto encoders aec and aer which can actually uh, provide this latent vector uh, for further processing so once we have this output of the auto encoders we concatenate them and use them as the feature vector to train our final prediction module which can actually predict the value of qij we uh, we validate the performance of our model using ws dream 1 dataset which consists of 339 users and 5825 services and has two qs parameters response time and throughput all the statistical information also we have enlisted we divide our dataset into two parts training and testing uh, and we use this mean absolute error as the comparison metric we compare our method as a state of state of the art methods and what we observe that uh, as compared to this memory based collaborative filtering which kind of relied on this similarity computation our method outperformed uh, as compared to this method the in case of model based collaborative filtering we have seen this methods uh, implemented using uh, implemented this matrix factorization factorization machine or deep learning architecture our method outperformed all this model based method but however in some uh, uh, hybrid methods which is the combination of memory based and model based method we have seen the accuracy they provided is much better than ours however they actually employed this online training uh, app, uh, they actually employ this online training and that is why this methods of prediction time is very high and we cannot actually integrate them into a real time system so on one hand our method provide significantly i mean reasonable accuracy and also our method has less prediction time and that is why our method can be incorporated to our real time system so these are the uh, these are the results which have which we have recorded for the networks which we have used in our methods and their validation accuracy we also did this ablation study we removed this noise removal module we also removed this sparsity removal module or sparsity or sparsity handling module and also this without feature transformation what could be the performance of our model we did all this ablation studies and what we have seen that of bq performed better uh, in presence of all the modules which actually implies that uh, implies the importance of all the modules in our method so this is the performance study with respect to the prediction time and since this of bq we can train it offline and we can use the pre trained model for prediction so of of bq has uh, significantly uh, less prediction time and we also compared our the performance of our method to the set of methods which has high accuracy but as you can see our method is uh, significantly faster as compared to these two methods so our method can be integrated to a real time system so in conclusion what we can say we designed systematically analyzed different challenges and design one qs prediction algorithm that can achieve high accuracy high scalability and fast prediction time 
So what we have did in our model, we have outlier detection method, but we did not have any outlier prediction method. So we investigate uh, whether we can provide any outlier prediction mechanism for this specific case. We also try to see this kind of model, what should be the, uh, how can we design the similar kind of model where the QS prediction problem, uh, QS actually varies across time or across relation. We also see if we incorporate this contextual information, for example, latitude, longitude of the user or where the service gets deployed, the IP address, all this contextual information to improve our accuracy or not. So these are some of the reference which we have used. So that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you, Somi. Uh, any questions from the audience? Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, any questions for Somi? Uh, okay, so uh, if no questions, so maybe I will ask one more question. I asked the uh, um, people, so me, so when you uh, talk about uh, accuracy, so I, I, I understand uh, what uh, accuracy means. So uh, you talk about to handle the scalability. So what uh, what does the scalability exactly mean? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, pardon? Uh, for scalability, right? So for example, uh, your offline deep learning for quality of service prediction, Say so why, yeah. I mean, why, yeah. So you mean the scalability, what does it mean? Is it mean, say you can handle- Can you, uh, can you please write down in chat? Your voice <clears throat> is breaking. I'm not ah, able to okay. hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so scalability, uh, we mean how many data it can handle actually, the dimensionality of the data, dimensionality of the feature vector actually. If we have, uh, if we need to have, uh, need to handle a large number of users or services, can our uh, model actually handle all this uh, relatively large number of users and services? That is what is meant by uh, scalability. I see, okay, gotcha. Uh... Yeah, so for scalability, so, I mean, what, what's the application for this? So but after you predict the quality of service, do you have any uh, actions? So for example, if there's outage or whatever, I mean, uh, what, what, what's the application for that? Aggregation. Uh, application. Application. So uh, yeah. this this QS prediction problem you are talking about, where uh, what is the application? Yeah, uh, do you see any application? Yeah, it could be used in service recommendation. So uh, if I have a set of services having same functionality, then uh, I may need to choose whichever service can be better in terms of quality of service parameter. So uh, basically I can predict this uh, quality of uh, parameter uh, parameters and then based on that, I can recommend. It also have further uh, application in service composition where the composition is done uh, based on this Q uh, QoS values. And this QoS values actually fluctuate uh, over time on or de uh, depending on the locations and depending on the users. And that is why whatever uh, values are promised by the service uh, provider that actually uh, usually do not meet in the real time. And that is why prediction is very much required. Uh, 